Hi, Andrea Morsec, Grissini CEO and founder of We the P, excited to bring to you today Mark Ritchie, the Secretary of State in Minnesota. Mark is going to share with us how we came into civic engagement, how that civic engagement ethic works into and um, relates to his professional work as a political leader, um, and sort of what's going on with the Secretary of State's work, not only his, but in broader sense of nationally. And then uh, he's retiring from that job pretty soon, so we're going to see if we can get a little hint of where he's going to next. Great to see you, Mark. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me on your show. Thanks for coming. And I know you're exceedingly busy. Mark's uh, stepping in to make sure that our governor is prepared as he goes into some health um, downtime due to his injured back. So we're going to try to snap right through this. It's really important to We the P to understand where We the People fits into real people like you in these very public positions. So where? When did you sort of get that inkling that you were part of the public fabric and an important contributor or potential contributor to it? I think that I never thought about it differently. My family, my grandparents and parents and cousins were active in their church, were active in their community. It was maybe a real blessing for me to mm -hmm. have grown up in a small town and you're kind of there. Mm -hmm. There isn't somebody from the outside that's going to come in and take care of this or build the church or take care of the school. That's the community. And um, in that way, there also was the allowance for young people to develop leadership skills. It was required. It was necessary. Mm -hmm. I think this is especially true in my church, but it also was true whether it was school activities or something in Scouts. But there was not just the awareness that we were the community and mm -hmm. if there was going to be a, a new baseball field or whatever it was mm -hmm. we had to produce it but we also um, felt empowered or felt encouraged to step forward as young people mm -hmm. and to take on whether it was running our own youth group at church or whatever it might have been so I think mm -hmm. those two things have been important for me and they've helped me always keep in mind that that's the option for mm -hmm. people, but it also is a requirement. There's going to be a mm -hmm. world created, mm -hmm. a world um, changed. Mm -hmm. It's going to come because we have to take the action. And I feel very blessed to live in Minnesota where almost everybody thinks like that as mm -hmm. well. That means we get a lot done. So tell us a little bit more about what you were like as a kid. I mean, I have this image in my mind of uh, probably a pretty energetic guy, young kid, um, with a lot of intellectual curiosity. Um, but beyond that, I don't, we don't know. So what were you like as a kid? Were you the studious kid that was very serious about these issues? Were you the baseball player that wanted a baseball field? I was the wrestler. There you go. The 95-pound wrestler. <laughs> Ooh, so the strategy of wrestling and learning how to well, manage uh, environment. When you're small, you have to uh, mm. find the things that, that work for you. But mm. um, I, I had the benefit of being in a family where education and mm. paying attention to education was seen as the kind of path forward. Mm. I mean, I think parents who grew up in the Depression and my dad had been a Marine in the Second World War and when he came out of the war there was the GI Bill which made it possible to then pursue higher education but my mother was a teacher mm. and so I think that having that opportunity to see that by being involved in my own education and mm. being involved in learning about the world or a subject more deeply mm. it gave me a path and it also made me very curious and one mm. thing about um, the post-Second World War economy. My father was a scientist for the U.S. Department of Agriculture and um, he moved when they built a new scientific research center. I mean, this was a time when the federal government understood its role in terms of addressing some sort of mm -hmm. big problems, mm -hmm. animal diseases that were killing, mm -hmm. you know. And um, his passion for that came from having been a Marine and serving in the war and after in China and seeing people die in front of his eyes from hunger and saying, I want to do something mm. about world hunger and my path will be science applied to how to make sure farmers can keep their animals alive and healthy. So it was mm. a scientific path, but that path then moved us around the country. And mm. so I got to live in many different places mm. and many different uh, circumstances. And I think in that way it also gave me a sense that this was um, a big world with lots of different kinds of people mm -hmm. and um, 
finding your way in that big world became part of the life project. So you're getting to know all kinds of different types of Americans from different parts of the country with different views and different perspectives, farmers and city dwellers and, and suburbanites at that time then too. Yes, I don't know and if I knew class. a lot of people in suburbs, but yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you maybe were aware that well, they were and, coming. Well, and, and you know, it mm -hmm. was that period too. We think of the post-Second War, the mm -hmm. baby boomers, right. you know, we think of the parents who had gone through the Depression and then gone through the Second World War and then saw how their responsibilities for rebuilding the world after that war mm -hmm. became really central. And so I had that uh, opportunity and I've uh, had the great benefit of being able to actually act on those values mm -hmm. through my work life and also in my personal life and my private life.